Our third and final segment of Lame Cow Wind is talking about global wind systems. Global winds. And those global winds are patterns that we see all throughout the globe at specific latitudes. Now we're really taking all of the information that we have throughout all of Lame Cow plus our other two winds and combining it together to understand how these patterns happen all around the globe. Okay, we're going to look at three major divisions of convection cells. Right, the earth is made up of all these different areas of uneven heating to create wind as the air is always moving from high to low pressure and we end up with six different convection cells. One, two, three above the equator, four, five, six below the equator. And we'll see that really whatever happens above is the same as happening below. So they'll mirror each other as we talk today. Now we do want to look at these major latitudes, of course zero being the equator. We are going to look at 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees both above and below the equator. We'll notice that the wind belts occur within all the latitude lines and then we'll look at some calm spots that occur on both the 30 and the equator, places that lack wind due to how the air moves in convection. So just a few things before we get started. We do want to remember the latitude, those are the horizontal lines on the earth. Okay, equator again being zero degrees. Longitude are the vertical lines running up and down on the globe. The final thing we want to keep in mind, and we talked about this way back in the intro to wind, is that winds are named by where they come from. So as we talk about the winds today, you're going to hear a name called the westerlies. That really clues us in that the wind is coming from the west, so we can expect what it's bringing our way. So again, horizontal lines, we're looking at latitude, the main ones of 0, 30, 60, and then up at the poles, 90. And then we're also looking at winds and their names based on where they come from. So like every trippy, tricky topic, it's always nice to start out with what we know. Okay? What are we familiar with? on this topic. Well, at the equator, we already know some information. We know the equator is the hottest part of the earth due to the immense amount of direct rays that are shine that shine there throughout the course of the year. So if it's the hottest part of the earth, we know that the air here is going to rise. Right? The air rises here. So on my globe there on the right hand side, I want to use hopefully a nice pink or red something to show that that's where the air is rising up in a convection current. We know material not only rises in convection, but it also sinks. And so as that air travels up into the atmosphere, eventually it cools as it's away from the direct heat of the equator, and it sinks at the 30 degrees. That flow right there of rising at the equator, sinking at the 30, that is my first convection current, or my first two sets of convection currents. I call these winds that occur here, I call these the trade winds. Okay, the trade winds are the winds that happen both above and below the equator, blowing from zero to 30 degrees latitude. And we do want to label both of those on the globe on the right hand side, noticing that above the equator they have the name of northeast trade winds, giving us a clue that those winds are then coming from the northeast. Below the equator I have the southeast trade winds. Southwest, southeast trade winds, again, giving us the name, telling us they're coming from the southeast. 
So how these winds would look, looking at my compass up here, northeast trade winds come from the northeast, so I would see them merging in this direction with a slight curve due to the fact we have Coriolis effect on the earth, its rotation. We would see then the southeast coming from this section, again with a curve to the left in the southern hemisphere for Coriolis. So make sure you have those labeled there in your earth diagram on the right. Again, all of this happened due to convection from the warm air rising at the equator, the cooler air sinking at the 30 degrees. That is my first set of convection currents. What else do we know? We knew the equator was hot. We know that the poles are cold. Air sinks here. So with a nice blue color, if we can draw in a sinking air here at the 90, showing the convection there is sinking high pressure air. That air then travels to the 60 degree latitude, warms up ever so slightly, and rises at the 60 degrees, creating my second set of convection currents between the 60 and the 90 latitudes. I call this set of winds the polar easterlies. Again, its name clues me into quite a bit of information. Not only are they cold and coming from the poles, but they are also coming from the east direction. I want to label both of those in on my globe on the right. Polar easterlies. Again on the bottom, polar easterlies. These are strong winds that are blowing from 60 to 90 degrees latitude, both north and south on Earth. Now again, these winds are happening in between the latitude lines due to the convection cells happening where the air rises and sinks at the different latitudes. Our middle section there is then determined by the motion of the other two convection currents, right? Because we had the warm air rising at the equator, we saw the cool air sinking at the poles, that generated sinking at the 30, rising at the 60, already creating for us that convection current happening between the 60 and the 30. This final convection current is the type of convection that we deal with here in Minnesota as we are at the 45 degree mark. All of our weather comes from the west, so these winds are named the westerlies. When we look at the forecast, we check out what's going on in the Dakotas, to the west of us, sometimes even a little further north in Canada, and we notice that the wind is coming from the west direction, bringing the weather from those locations. These are the winds that blow in the middle section from 30 to 60 degrees. I have now included on my diagram here the three major wind belts on Earth. Between the 0 and the 30, I have the trade winds. Between the 60 and the 90, my polar easterlies. And between the 30 and the 60, the westerlies. All wind belts created from the convection happening in the atmosphere. Because the wind always is moving from the high pressure to the low that generates the airflow on the surface. We can again see those nice convection currents in this diagram because of that warm rising air at the equator, the cooler sinking air at my 30 and 90. Those convection currents create the wind patterns on the surface.
Now we do also want to make note of the calm spots happening right at two latitude lines. Calm spots is where the air is predominantly rising or falling. Okay, I have a vertical motion of air at these two locations. In my wind belts, I have a horizontal motion of air moving across the surface here. I have a rise or sink of the air, again, because of convection. The doldrums I find at the equator. The doldrums are at the equator. Label that up on my second map here. Doldrums are found at the equator, and again, it's happening because of what we already know. We know that the equator is warm, causing that air to rise upward. As that air rises up, the doldrums and the equator experience low pressure very consistently throughout the year. Low pressure, as we know, brings a certain type of weather. As that warm air rises up, I'm usually found I'm usually finding clouds and rain happening in that area, which brings me the tropical climates that I find at the equator that are paired with the doldrums and the rain that the low pressure brings. So again, doldrums are the calm spot found at the equator, zero degrees, because there's no prevailing horizontal wind, but mostly a simple rising of air due to the high temperatures found here. That consistency of warm rising air gives it a tropical climate, an average higher temperature than normal and high amount of precipitation than normal due to that low pressure that's consistently there. My second calm spot to label are the horse latitudes. Horse latitudes are at 30 degrees, both north and south of the equator. Label those up. Horse latitudes. Horse latitudes is a little different. Our equator, we had warm rising air, at the 30 is where we have our cool sinking air. Sinking air means that I have a higher pressure and again this is a calm spot. I don't have a lot of horizontal wind. I have simply sinking air. Air that is moving downward within the convection current. Because this is an area of high pressure I think of it as a dry climate or the deserts of the world. Sahara Desert is found very close to 30 degrees. So again, overall I have three major wind belts that happen in between the latitude lines on Earth, all driven by convection currents due to rising and sinking air at different latitudes. The calm locations are found on the latitude lines due to the air they're mostly rising or sinking rather than being horizontal. Couple questions on the right hand side to go over the diagrams that we just completed. Which wind belt would I say affects us in Minnesota? Being at 45 degrees, the Minnesota wind belt would be the westerlies. The wind belt that would help bring explorers from Europe over to America Okay, Europe, of course, being over here, they would need to move this direction to get to the Americas. That would be the trade winds. That kind of gives you a little clue about what their name came from, right? Those winds were used to bring materials and goods over to the Mexico and the Americas. To get back home then to Europe, they couldn't travel against the wind as they were only in sailboats, so they had to hop a little bit north to the westerlies to take them home. Coming from the west, those winds are moving predominantly east, 
bringing them back to their home. The wind belt that would blow the coldest air would of course be the one with poles in its name. Polar Easterlies. And finally, why would you as a sailor try to avoid the doldrums and the horse latitude? Reason being, there's no prevailing wind in that area. The main motion of wind is vertical. Because that air is rising and sinking at those two locations, it's not good for your sails. Remember to complete the review questions. Good practice on all parts of our wind discussion, including a diagram to help you think about relabeling the major wind belts and calm areas. As you complete those, you may have a summary question or two remaining to get ready to move on from our unit.